Hey guys, and welcome to my review of Nope, Jordan Peele's third film. I, I almost want to call it fourth because I know he was a producer in Candyman, but dude, the guy's fingerprints were all over that movie. So to me, it's like his fourth kind of, but yeah. And listen, this is going to be freaking spoilers. Like I'm going to go over everything here. There's your warning. If you're looking to see Nope and like not know anything about it, don't watch this video right now because I'm going to freaking go over everything. I'm going to review it, go over scene breakdowns, rate it, rank it with Jordan Peele's films, including Candyman, and also talk about, oh, there's a few films he kind of, you know, is inspired from, but dude, one particular film? Wow, yeah, a lot in common here. And I'm going to go over the comparisons, including some stuff maybe you didn't pick up on. But yeah, and listen, man, Jordan Peele, he is freaking talented, dude. Get Out was a freaking classic, obviously. That movie is freaking awesome and important. Us was ambitious Candyman, um, but nope look exciting the trailers were cool and you were like hmm like it was like a mystery and that's awesome well, let me first tell you this movie is not a horror movie no it's a science fiction film and and it's a good one even though I will say that opening beginning in broad daylight you got to give nope credit because it's cool when something would be creepy but it's always easy to make something creepy in the dark when you're creepy in the daylight, like broad daylight, out in an open field broad daylight, you got to give credit to a film that does that. And dude, this movie starts with the most eeriest freaking scene. And yeah, I freaking love that. Good job movie. And we pretty much have like two main protagonists in this film. Really, the main one is Daniel Kaluuya, who's like Jordan Peele's guy. He puts him as the main guy in everything. And he's a good actor. I have nothing against him. I'm sure he's a great person. I've just never been really a fan of his because I don't know how to put it. Um, He's got RBF to like the 13th degree. Like the look on his face, it looks like he's just pissed. Like he wants to beat somebody up, dude. I would not want to run into this guy in a bad mood. Even Black Panther. He was in the movie. It just opened up in Wakanda and I see, oh, there's Daniel Kaluuya. I'm like, guess what? He's going to freaking screw somebody over. Yep. He was a traitor in the movie. Not really hard to spoil that. But yeah, I've never seen a protagonist always just have like this look about him that he just, he doesn't look happy. In this film, he is supposed to be awkward though. And thankfully, the other protagonist he shares time with, bro, Kiki Palmer, is fantastic in this film. And she opens up with a scene just doing this whole little monologue, like a real cheerful one, talking about like the first film footage ever made, and which is a true story, by the way. And that dialogue, that monologue, when she started just da 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 I was like, okay, that's Quentin Tarantino. In fact, I have a hard time believing anyone but Quentin Tarantino wrote that monologue. And I'm like, this script is going to be fantastic if that's what we're in for. Because her little do 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 was just freaking amazing. The energy was awesome. You immediately love the freaking girl. She's fantastic. And you're like, okay, that eerie vibe and then that monologue. If this is what we're in for, this is going to be one special freaking film. I did like it. The thing is, and people are going to complain about this. I, I know there's people that like really hate this film. And there's people that really love this movie. I, I think it's okay to be in between somewhere. The thing about it is that the first hour of this film, it takes its time. Yeah. It's like you're hanging out and you're doing stuff and some of it is entertaining. Not all of it. And I know it's easy to just say, oh, slow burn character development. Yes, it's a slow burn and I have no problem with slow burns, but the character development part, there's not a whole lot to develop with these characters. Like, we don't really see a whole lot of change from when we first meet them to halfway through the film. It's the same person we met. So, there's it's just, they're just kind of chilling and hanging out, I guess. Steve Yoon's in this. Uh, Glenn from freaking Walking Dead. Yeah, he's in this. And we're well just getting into the Jaws references now. He basically plays the mayor in Jaws. He's the guy that pretty much, like, freaking runs the town and... Yeah, and if since spoilers, it's not a flying saucer, it's a freaking alien that's going around. It just looks like a flying saucer. Good job, Jordan Peele. That was different. That was interesting. That was cool. And yeah, you start, it's like, okay, similarities because that first hour, you don't really see the shark. You don't really see the thing. You just kind of see it go and, oh, it's there. Oh, it's there. It's like, you really don't see a lot of it. And in Jaws, you know it's there. You just don't see it. And it was really creepy. Not really that creepy here, but it, I, I get what they were doing. And there is a side plot going on, like that background thing about the monkey, I will tell you. That had some moments, and it was really interesting. Especially when the monkey, like, kind of went, pun intended, ape shit. 
and just freaking started beat the crap out of everybody. That was some scary shit, dude. That was probably the one moment in the movie that I was like, oh, and yeah, it was cool. I will say, I don't know where that story was going or what the payoff was. I get the symbolism of animals. And if anything, if anyone in this planet should know how to respect an animal and not make it a sideshow, it's the guy who decided to do a thing and make a sideshow with an animal that he didn't understand. So, yeah, I don't... <sighs> sure, but I guess we do get our Memorial Day weekend Jaws scene, which is when the shark finally comes out and people really see it and you're like, whoa! I will say it doesn't have the effect of Jaws because I, could they have just put teeth in that thing and not make it look like a vacuum when it came and took people? I think maybe just putting teeth might have helped a little bit. I don't know. It wasn't settling and seeing people be going in the stomach. That was kind of cool, I guess. But as far as the rest of it, it just, it just, it, it didn't, it, it, it's not scary. It's interesting. The monster's not scary. In fact, the monster, I will argue, is actually really beautiful. When it starts to open up at the very end, in like the third act, it looks like really pretty. But we have a Memorial Day beach weekend scene where the freaking alien comes and freaking eats everybody up and all that stuff. And yeah, things do start picking up, thank God. And for anyone that didn't pick up the Jaws references yet, what you really pick it up is when Quinn shows up. That's right. The guy that Michael Wincott plays. The first time I saw him was the villain in The Crow. Oh my God. Awesome movie. Awesome villain. Yeah, he's like a director here that needs that perfect shot and wants that perfect shot. And I get it. And he's like the expert. He's Quinn, basically, from Jaws. Brody is obviously a combination of our two protagonists. And if you're like, oh, well, where's Richard Dreyfus? He's the tech guy. Uh, Angel, that guy. Yes, that's Richard Dreyfus. The house, obviously, is the boat. It's out in the middle of nowhere, and it's one safe place you could be. And it is interesting. It, it kind of gets a feeling of adventure. Like, um, they're going on, like, an expedition, almost. Like, when they bring the camera and everything's going to get going. The same feeling. Like, they're like, let's go out on the boat, and let's go find the shark. Same feeling. Jordan Peele, dude. Like, it doesn't feel like he ripped it off in any way. It was just kind of a beat-by-beat -beat Jaws. But he didn't rip it off. It's kind of cool. That that took some, That's a balancing act right there. And you got to give Jordan Peele credit for that. Now, I will say one thing negative about Jordan Peele films, and now I've seen enough of them to know Jordan Peele does really good at development, 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 development. Now, here's the end of the movie, right? From here to here, wherever he has to get to, and hear me out before you flip out, Whenever wherever he has to get to at the very end, right before he gets to the finale... It's rushed. Like, it, it, he goes from development, development, slow burn to, like, breakneck speed. Us, it just stopped making sense. Even, like, the little boy, he's mimicking him, and that wasn't even explained. It was just weird. They just had to get rid of people quickly. I'm not even going to get into Candyman. Even Get Out was rushed the way suddenly it's the end of the film. In this, they come up with a pretty legit way to not get killed, which is don't give eye contact to the monster. Avoid eye contact. Pretty easy way to survive now, especially for people with bad posture that look down all the time when they walk. Bro, they can live, they can coexist with this thing now. No way you're going to be in danger unless you're an idiot that looks up at it. But the point is they need to bring down the count of people to make sure there's only one or two left at the end of the film. So the director who wants his perfect shot, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to bend with this. His perfect shot is getting eaten by the monster. I'm so, I, dude, I don't buy it. At no point did he sound like he was that insane. He just wanted the shot of the alien, which can we all agree at that point of the movie, he got it up and down. He got every shot of the alien. To want to get eaten by the alien purposely to get a perfect shot. Dude, if you want to kill the guy, can you just have him like fall on a nail or some shit instead? That's more realistic. And now we have to get rid of Angel because we, we need to, but he doesn't have to die. Just like Richard Dreyfus, taken out but doesn't die. Angel just runs out for no reason and he's just like, oh. Did he even look up at the monster? I don't think he did, which is where it gets weird because this movie just set up rules and it's breaking its own rules to bring down the survivor count. Then we get to our two protagonists. Kiki and Resting Bitchface are both right here, right? All they have to do is ride the horse or ride the motorcycle kind of looking straight instead of looking up. End of movie. You can't do that. You need to make it like, yeah. I still don't know if Daniel Kaluuya looked up or not. Did it matter? No, because this movie is already breaking its own rules that it just set up. So now this monster, I guess, can attack you and you're still in danger even if you don't look up at it? It makes no sense. But Kiki goes, it is interesting how she kills the monster. The whole little blow up. That was kind of cool. Jaws and the monster both died by air pressure blowing it up. So that's interesting too. Good similarity. 
And yeah, did did resting bitch face live or did he die? I don't know. I'm I'm gonna assume because I want to think Jordan Peele is a better writer that he lived because if he died for no freaking reason because he didn't have to look at the monster, it's just stupid. It's stupid. So I'm gonna benefit of the doubt. Yes, he lived and whatever. And yeah, this movie had a lot of similarities to Jaws, dude. Is it as good as Jaws? Nope. It's not cool when I say it. You know what? I think like when black people say nope, it's really cool. A white person or a Spanish person does it. It just doesn't sound right. It's nope. See, it, yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't. Nope was a nice effort that I think was better than Candyman for sure. Better than us. Not. It's not Get Out. So it's his number two. And it's, it's, it's Diet Jaws. That's what this is. It's Diet Jaws. Guys, what did you think of Nope? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you want to rank his movies, freaking do that too. Please like and subscribe to all the stuff that I have and uh, thanks for watching.